biofilms. What are they? Are they hazardous? How can we use them and what is biofilm research? So first, what is a biofilm? A biofilm is defined as an assembly of microbes that is attached to a surface in a slimy polymer-based substance. Let's see how biofilms form in the first place. Here we see a single bacteria cell often referred to as planktonic cells. This is the first stage of formation. The bacterium swim using their flagella through the liquid until they reach surface. The next stage of formation is reversible attachment, meaning that the cells could be removed by gentle rinsing. Then comes the EPS, which stands for exopolymetric substances, essentially a fancy way of saying a polymer-based slime. Thanks to the EPS, the next stage is irreversible attachment. It should be noted that these drawings are not to scale. There are millions of cells in the biofilm, which form microcolonies. These communities then form tower structures. The structures increase the surface area of the biofilm, which means that more nutrients can be absorbed from the surroundings. The colonies control this process using chemical signals to communicate throughout the biofilm. As the biofilm matures, it opens up to disperse cells that can swim to new surfaces and form more biofilms. Then, the whole process repeats itself again. Because of their durability, biofilms can form just about anywhere. They can form in your mouth as plaque, which can be removed mechanically by brushing your teeth. They also form on the surface of ponds and on rocks as pond scum. Biofilms are also used when making cheese. But why do microbes form biofilms anyway? Simply put, there's safety in numbers. The EPS protects bacteria against harsh UV rays from the sun. The EPS also helps to protect against dehydration in the case that the biofilm is left exposed. Predators can also be deterred by microbes when a biofilm has been formed. Overall, when in biofilms, bacteria are more resistant. For example, most biofilms are antibiotic resistant. The durability of biofilms makes them rather problematic. For example, if they form on medical devices or implants, they can cause serious infections. They also corrode and block pipes and can even make your clothes smelly. It is estimated that up to 80% of chronic infections are caused by biofilms. Clearly biofilm formation is a real issue, so one branch of biophysics research aims to manage and prevent biofilm formation. An example of this research is a collaboration between vets and biophysicists at the University of Edinburgh. After a catheter implant, animals often develop infections due to a biofilm growth. The team is trying to model the biofilm growth through computer simulations in order to understand and prevent its formation. But, it's not all bad. Biofilms can be used to make a positive impact too. One example of this is in bioremediation. If an oil tanker has an oil spill out at sea, specific biofilms may be grown on the water that actually eat the oil. The microbes digest the oil and turn it into harmless gas and water. Another branch of current research in biophysics is biofilm engineering. At the University of Edinburgh, Kate McPhee's research group managed to isolate a protein responsible for biofilm production. The team found that the protein could be used to slow the melting of ice cream. So, biofilms can grow just about anywhere, cause a number of problems, but can also be used to solve problems too. Biophysics is a relatively new area of interdisciplinary research, but is growing rapidly with the aims of solving some of society's greatest problems.